Hi, I'm Kurt Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter with coverage from NAB 2012. In this episode, Ron Bell Island from Toshiba talking about their new innovations for the coming year. David Asprey talking about the cloud from Trend Micro. Donny Osmond in a celebrity moment and so much more. Stick around. Welcome to NAB 2012. Live from Las Vegas. From Las Vegas, it's NAB 2012. Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter with the distinguished pleasure to be with Rob Bell Isle from Michigan. Yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really from Michigan, but yes. we're supposed to say that. <laughs> right, because of Belle Isle in Detroit. I'm sorry, it's a Michigan joke. I've used the award-winning Toshiba products for years, and you've won more awards today. Yeah, we did very well. So Toshiba is actually the inventor of solid state. So what we were showing here are some of the products that we can use solid state into the broadcast world. We're showing a few things, three of them. One of them was a playout video server that sits in a master control. We were showing also an adaptive stream edge server for the multi-screen environment, and we were showing our transmitters that we have here. And in the solid state realm, we were showing that it could be price compatible to HDD drives, but at a higher reliable rate. Yes. What is the on-air max? So the on-air max is a playout video server, and it's all solid state. And if you see inside here, we are kind of like a la carte. You just stuff in inputs, outputs in solid state, put them anywhere you want, and out you go. If there's an ever an issue, you, they're, you, they're hot swappable. We don't have to raid. We don't have to get that extra drive. If there's a failure on the board, we have forward error correction and parity that just writes a, rewrites around the error cell, and we continue. So we can have up to 256 failures, but usually the first failure won't happen until 12 years It's in, on the solid state compared to a mean time between failure rate on a hard drive, which you, people on the video server world usually start swapping between the fourth and fifth year. How many terabytes would it hold? Well, you can scale up to 60 terabytes. It's all stackable. And the nice thing about solid state is when you grow it, it's just, just adding. You don't have to rewrite or do any sort of any special magic. You just connect another box and it just recognizes it and off you go. In a box like this, what's an average price? Well, right now we're making our prices very compatible to the competition that in Playout Server. So it all depends on your configuration, but we'll see that if you wanted a price configuration to a hard drive, we're going to be there at the same price. We're not going to be. We're not, we're not trying to come over here and say, "Hey, here's a beautiful example of great technology," but you're going to have to spend the price of a Ferrari. So a lower end model, obviously, not everybody's going to need that much space. Would a 2 gig model of this be a low end, or where is the bottom of this device? Oh, that's a great question. So, yeah, we're not the channel in the box style. What we have instead is as you grow and scale larger, um, then it becomes very attractive. I mean, just imagine right now that if you had 40 channels and you had to play them all out at once. In the hard drive world, they all have to spin up. There's a reliable reliability concern, and then the power, it sucks down, and then the, the cooling it has to take for that, for, for all that power is a big issue. For 40 channels, we can just play out instantaneously and it doesn't do anything to the power load, the heat. These are cards, they're not hard drives per se, of the spinning old hard drive we used to have. Yeah, right, so there is no moving parts in here and that's what makes it reliable. I mean, the door does swing open and we have a fan in the back for, you know, for the power supply and for the file base card. We have two 10G ports on the back of here. So one 10G port you wow. can put in at, we guarantee 80, 800 megabits per second per, per for the file transfer mm -hmm. times times uh, 10. So this card here is basically showing the solid state with the controller on it, and um, that's what the solid state looks like. And it's replacing the hard drives. It just fits in a slot in the chassis, and you can just make it grow. You also said you have a new streaming technology that no longer taxes um, the hard drive like it used to in the past. For the adaptive streams, we have multi-screens, and uh, we're showing an edge server. And on that edge server, um, all the media that gets pulled out to the devices does not have to hit the CPU. So there's no CPU buffering. You can actually take from solid state and stream out onto a 
to a 40G port that we have, 4 times 10G. And it looks to, like this. Yeah, and it hits 64,000 devices. So that could be your iPod, your iPad, or the Android this, world. This is scalable all you the can, way to the Android world of phones. That's right. So iPads. we had phones. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you go over here, you can just turn your phone on and join join the shows that we're broadcasting. As you gaze into the Toshiba crystal balls, yes. where are we headed in the future? What's up next? You mentioned about having multiple channel access. Yeah, so I mean, what we're seeing actually is um, we're t everything that we do, no matter how leading it is in innovation, it has to be green. It's all the power savings. Um, we're, this is great if you scale up. And wow. as I said, when you're playing 40 channels out, you're not like tapping into the power and into the cooling. And leaving a footprint behind that's incredible. That's right, yeah, so we've got a nice, great carbon footprint. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a long week. I, All right, Kurt, I, I hope it was very fun. well for the company with these new technologies. Coming up next on our coverage of NAB 2012. We have data centers surrounded by 50,000 servers that search and look and say, is this a phishing site or is this not a phishing site? And we offer real-time blocking inside the browser. You're behind the table in Las Vegas with the Actors Reporter and Kurt Kelly. Stick around. You don't want to miss this. And now, an inside look at the best in today's technologies. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We are live in... Las Vegas. Wait, they say what happens here stays here, but since I've been doing this new television series on the Travel Channel called Vegas Trip, we're trying to uncover everything in Vegas. And we're with David Asprey, or Dave. I'm a VP of Cloud Security at Trend Micro, and it turns out I've been for almost the last 20 years involved with cloud, the very early days of cloud. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, there are a lot of people here today thinking what happens when their content goes up into the cloud. So I thought maybe today we could chat about that. Most people around the planet are using clouds and have no concept of what they are or gosh when I'm watching my favorite concert on my app through Google or my iPad or watching it on my computer at home you're actually behind everything they're getting it's true the cloud is now what powers all of your mobile devices. So the idea that it's on your iPhone is sort of kind of true. We might have downloaded your video or your audio down to the iPhone, but it was sitting somewhere in the cloud before it even got there. You provide a higher level of encryption to hopefully secure people's money, their technology, and their intellectual property. We do. And what we found is that media companies have enormous requirements for storage and for compute power in the cloud. So what they're doing is they're uploading their core intellectual property you know, by the terabyte up into the cloud. And then oftentimes it's not that well protected. So what we do is we add a layer of encryption on top of it to protect it so that no server can ever talk to your important intellectual property until we basically certify that that server is who it says it is. And that's one of the fundamental cloud problems. You don't know if anyone is who they say they are with the cloud. Well, we make sure that servers are who they say they are and even people are who they say they are before they can get to what you've put up there. As a company at Trend Micro is we look at how do we protect all these devices that are connecting to the cloud, and then how do we con protect your core data that's in the cloud? So when you're done, you know that your iPhone, your iPad, your PC is fully protected, and your intellectual property in the cloud is fully protected because it's encrypted. That way, no matter which side of the equation you're on, you always know that what's yours is yours, and what someone wants to get, they need to legally purchase from you. Cyber criminals have really made this into a, a, a real business where they have metrics and they treat it just like someone selling ads on the internet now. So what they'll do is they'll infect a file and put it in a cloud storage. They'll also send you an email with a link to that file mm -hmm. and they'll infect a website. And then they'll send you an email. If you click on the link, you get infected. If you download the file, you get infected. So what we're doing is we're correlating those threats to say, ah, that email is infected, that link is infected, and that file's infected, or maybe just one of them. Right. So solving that problem goes a long way towards making sure that you can economically share that data that's up in the cloud. How can I prevent someone from phishing? You know, having software like the Trend Micro suite on your machine will do that. What you might not know when you install this is that you are connecting as part of an immune system with almost 100 million other computers that are hooked up. Every time someone goes to a new URL, we have data centers surrounded by 50,000 servers that search and look and say, is this a phishing site or is this not a phishing site? And we offer real-time blocking inside the browser. You can actually put a digital encryption fingerprint 
to see where it's coming from, where it's going to, and maybe who put their hands on it, who shouldn't have? There are definitely companies, companies here, who do a really good job of watermarking. So if it's a, a PDF or a video, say a video file, and you're concerned someone's going to download it, then you want to watermark that. But what we'll do is we'll make sure that no one stole that file originally from your cloud and then distributed it for free. And that becomes a real problem, you know, with pre-release things where, oh, I was, I was going to launch this next week, but I'm sorry, it already got launched and it's not even all the way rendered. You know, we, we saw that with X-Men a while back where it was very widely viewed on BitTorrent. So wow. preventing those kind of leaks, even with something called data loss prevention, we have that. We can actually let you set a rule that says anyone working at my company may not upload this kind of content except to this location, which we know is secure because we encrypted it. If you have hundreds of hours of recording time and editing time, and this is you know, the copy you're working on, maybe you have it backed up from yesterday, maybe you don't. You, you ought to. But you can lose an enormous amount of hours of work if you're not running the appropriate security. So it's not about just being safe, it's about actually getting your job done. One of the emerging problems is criminals are actually mounting video cameras. They're so small, these little surveillance things now, uh, you know, right out of paparazzi land, I guess. But they, they put them in places where people use their laptops a lot. You can see on the screen what someone's username is and you can see their fingers. They do it for ATM keypads too. Right. So I advise people to definitely be careful if you're in public and you're typing a password for your core site, you know, protect it a little bit. Make sure there's no one shoulder surfing. That's what you know, hackers call it. I can literally be sitting in Miami and watching your every keystroke in Los Angeles because yes. um, I have my network set up that way. When people are working on my networks, I want to know what's going on. I own the company. Um, but hackers have that same ability yes. with their spyware technology. The best spam attack is one where it comes from you to me because I'm in your address book. So, oh, I'm going to open it because you're a friend. And that's right. a good way to get past these phishing attacks. And that's why you know it's, it's very hard for people to avoid just using their mind to avoid spam because, or to avoid malware and phishing. You just don't know. But if you have software running, it'll say, warning, warning, that link that was in your that email from the friend, the guy you know, that link was actually going to an infected site. Don't click on it. And it'll actually disable the link for you. That's one of the things that the Trend Micro software does. I look forward to seeing more of your future developments because you um, are definitely on the cutting edge, not the bleeding edge of technology. Thank you, Kurt. It was really a pleasure talking today. In just a few moments, we'll be back with more. Stick around. Hi, I'm Dave Asprey with Trend Micro, and you're watching Actors Reporter with Kurt Kelly. Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. Donny Osmond as our celebrity moment. And uh, I shouldn't say this because it makes me sound older than I am, but this coming December, I'm celebrating 50 years in show business. That's a long time be kicked off a Dancing with the Stars. I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> Maybe I should ask Marie. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna kill me. But it's really interesting, you guys, to be known for so many different things. And it depends on the generation that you're talking to as to what they know you for. And I bring up Dancing with the Stars for a reason. About a week after I won the trophy, um, Marie and I are doing the show at the Flamingo, and I look down in the front row, there's this cute little 10-year-old boy. He's in his suit and tie, dressed to the nines. He wanted to come see the champion, right? So he, he couldn't take his eyes off me, and it was just the cutest thing. After the show, we do a meet and greet. You guys know what a meet and greet is. And, and uh, I see him in the line with his parents, and he's getting closer and closer to me. And the closer he gets to me, the more excited he becomes. Finally, he walks up to me, shakes my hand, and he says, Mr. Osmond, I didn't know you could sing, too. <laughs> if you're about my age, and you're a teenager in the 70s, the last thing you want to admit is you like Donny Osmond. You'd either be dead by now, or beat up severely. My, my fourth son, Christopher, he, this is when he was in high school a few years ago, and he was in his junior year, and he comes upstairs one morning before going to school, and he has in his hands something. He said, I found this box in our basement, Dad. I didn't know you had it. And he opens it up. It's an old vintage Donny Osmond t-shirt, all right? He says, can I wear this to high school? If you want to get beat up, go right ahead. <laughs> I was a singing voice for the... Uh, character called Captain Shang. 
I had everything ready in my computer, so I said, let's do it. Let's get down to business to defeat. And I'm looking at this little eight-year-old girl. She's having the time of her life, loving it. I finish the song, applause, applause, applause. I pull out another card. It's from a guy. He says, I'm here tonight with my mom. She's celebrating her 99th birthday tonight. All she wanted for her birthday was to see Donny Osmond. I went from eight years old to 99. And I said, where are, I think her name was, uh, was it Grace, I think it was Grace. I said, Grace, where are you? And she was pretty much in the back. Spotlights couldn't follow me. I jump off the stage, turn the house lights on. I go clear in the back. And I pick up this frail little lady. And I just start, you are so beautiful. The band starts following me. To me and everybody in the audience start taking pictures. Oh, that is so cute, that is so cute. And I finish the song, and I, I'm slow dancing with her. And as I finish, she grabs the mic. And, <laughs> and she says, Donnie, I've loved you ever since I was a little guy. <laughs> Radio has been such an important part of my life. Yes, I was discovered on television, Andy Williams show. But it wasn't until the early 70s that radio, and if you don't like Donny Osmond, it's your fault because radio made me popular. But radio, when, when they grabbed a hold of my career, that's when things took off. I remember listening to Casey Kasem. He was radio god to me. I heard Casey Kasem in the early 70s listening to the countdown, 1840. And when he said, the number one record all across America for the Osmond Brothers. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah! And one bad apple started. I thought, can life get any better? And it did. Later on that year, I'm listening to my radio god again, Casey Casey. And he said, the number one record all across America for Donny Osmond. He said my name on the radio. I thought, and he played Go Away Little Girl. Everybody thinks it was Puppy Love, because Go Away Little Girl was my biggest record. But when Casey Kasem said Donny Osmond, I thought, I can now die and go to Radio Heaven. I thought, that is the coolest, coolest thing. And here's why I'm running out of time. Dang, I got so many stories I want to tell you. But, um, here's why I love radio. People say it's a dying media. Don't believe it. Because with radio, you have ownership. Now, television is great and everything, but the director tells you what to see. They tell you, I want you to see this angle. angle. I want you to see this much. I want you to see this close up. You can sit on your couch and eat your potatoes and say, and not even think. Your imagination is gone. What happens with radio? Your imagination goes wherever it wants to go. I'm probably the only person in this room who hasn't seen Hunger Games. Have you seen Hunger Games? You ever seen it? Is this on? <laughs> Have you seen Hunger Games? Okay. I haven't seen it. Some of my children have seen it. And I asked them the other day, guys, do you recommend it? He said, Dad, it's so bloody. It's really, it's really gory. It's really bloody. I said, well, tell me about some of the scenes. And as they started to begin to explain the movie, they said, wait a minute. There wasn't that much blood and gore in it. That's the sign of a great director. He leads you to a point and let you take it the rest of the way. That's why Hitchcock was such an amazing director and so revered. He never really saw everything that you really saw in your mind. They lead you to a point and your imagination takes it way beyond what any visual can give you. Radio does that. Radio will always do that. Radio permeates every work for work in the workforce, in your car, at home, on your smartphone, on your computer. Radio is not a dying media. It is so good. I like challenge. If you don't want if you want me to do something, tell me I can't do it. That's exactly what I go like. I like to climb mountains. That Howard Stern challenge was a big mountain for Donnie Osmond to climb, so I said, I'm doing it. It's in New York City waiting in the green room, and I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating so much, I got tacos under my arms. Man, that makes it bad. I'm ready to walk out of that building thinking my friends and family and advisors were right. I'm gonna die. And it was like an epiphany. 
It was like the heavens opened up, right? Two words came to my mind. Be yourself. I think what Mike McVeigh told me, talking to one person, make it real. Make the stories you're talking about real. Don't try to overdo it. When I do my radio show, I, I'll probably do four or five takes. Yesterday, I remember doing uh, for the show uh, four takes of this one thing. Not to make it perfect, to make it real. I love being in radio. I think it's so much fun. I hope I can do this a long, long time. And I appreciate the invitation to being here today. I hope you have a, a great time. I'd love to spend all day here. I've, I've got to get to the Flamingo. I have, I have a little vocal booth that I put in my dressing room. That's where I do my radio show. And then i got to get ready to do this show with this chick named Marie. Um, but it's been fun being here. I really love being a part of this community, a part of this organization. So thank you very much for, for allowing me to be here. Have a great day. Coming up on a future episode of NAB 2012, we'll have Dennis Wharton, who is the Executive Vice President of NAB, talking about how the show impacts global broadcasting as well as here in the United States. Anne-Marie Cummings, the Vice President of Communications for NAB, is coming up in a future episode of NAB 2012. We have continuing coverage of NAB 2012 coming up soon. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. Thanks for joining us.